Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Megan and this is part two of our acrylic pouring for beginner series and today we are going to tackle the swirl. Um, the swirl is my favorite technique. Um, it can also be used like a bottle bottom pour. Use the bottom of a um, like a 20 ounce cap and pour that gives um, a different design. Um, this one, no, that was not a bottle bottom. Um, but anyway, the bottle bottom pour just kind of makes it go in different ways, but it's it's very similar. It's the same technique, um, and it gives you these really neat defined um, lines. This one I happened to tilt, so it lost you know the circle, but it still has these really really beautiful areas of color um, that just not quite bleed into each other. They're very you know separated, but something very subtle about it. Um, I like my swirls personally without cells. I'll show you some examples with them. Um, here's another one. It, this one has a few, but it was mixed um, for no cells. However, this was all, I think everything but the white in this was craft paint. Um, and it was probably a bit thinner than, um, say, this one. So let me show you some swirls. Well, let me show you one more without cells. This is a. This was a triple, um, a triple swirl, and this is this is one of my favorites, and I love the way this really kind of focus. Um, the white kind of ghosted a little bit, and you can see some of the other colors, um, but this was a triple, triple swirl. So I filled up these same colors in each one of these and then poured a swirl so you had three um, different swirls coming out and this pretty little rose popped up um, but this is this is another one with excuse me no cells and very very defined lines from the swirl and that's personally how I like my swirls now if you do a swirl with um, cells Actually, this is probably my favorite swirl that I have that does have cells. Uh, it's a little bit wonky. It's a little bit um, funky. But it's really fun. And you still have some of those swirl patterns, but that's broken up um, by the cells. And in fact, I have one here also that I use leftover paint, so it was all mixed with... Um, silicone and Floetrol and it was a thinner mix that I would normally use for like a dirty pour or something that I, I'm looking for cells and you can really see um, what a thinner mix for cells is going to give you. Um, there's really not many of those striations from the swirl. There's a couple right here, a little bit right here, you know at the edges but really the cells kind of took over and because it was thinner um, it's spread a little bit more and you, you, you lose that really neat definition. Personally, I like it in a swirl. And you may like this type better. You know, that's totally up to you. But I'm going to show you... Oh, well, real quick. If you like this style better with the cells, um, use the mix I showed in my last video, my, my beginner series episode one, or in my mixing video because I use that for this. But I'm going to show you today the mix I use when I want to do a swirl with no cells. Um, and I want those really, really nice swirl striations. So um, this is one of my favorite paints for doing a swirl. Um, this Creative Inspirations from, I got this at um, Jerry's Artorama. Nova Color is great. Um, it's very similar to like Liquitex Basics. They're thicker paints and you really don't want a really thin paint um, because you want to you want it a bit thicker so you want to start out a little bit thicker so let's pour some of this in here that is plenty and then I don't add anything but a little bit of water for my swirls I don't add Floetrol because that um, can cause cells and obviously no silicone I'm not worried about um, not having a medium um, in this because I'm not adding enough water to worry about underbinding my paint. I'm almost out of water in my bottle. I may have to get more. 
So, but because I'm not adding too much water and I don't have to worry about underbinding, I'm not worried at all about finding a replacement medium for my Floetrol. Just a little bit of water will do it. I mean, more than just a little, but it's certainly not 30% or 50%. And that's a pretty touchy debate if you get into it on how much water should you add water at all. Um, you know, if you want to get into that, you can Google because that's a pretty, you can get into it because acrylic, the bonding for acrylic on the canvas and to itself is really, um, you know, you can underbind so you break up those acrylic molecules so much that it won't, you know, over time it can flake off from the canvas, um, and all of that. And obviously you don't want that at all, but I'm not adding enough water that I'm worried about it. It may look like I'm adding quite a bit because I keep going, but I had almost none in my bo water bottle, so I was adding not very much at all. In fact, I need a little bit more. Let me go get some more water. Okay, I had to get a little bit more water. Now I'm going to be a little bit more careful since my bottle is full. Don't want to end up with too much water in there. A little bit more. You want it still to be fluid, but not super thin. And really with any technique, consistency of your paint is really, really key. Um, you know, if you want cells that are going to hang on and but the big ones, you know, consistency is really, really important. If you're having trouble getting the effect you want, um, work on your consistency before worrying too much about the materials you're using. I mean, obviously you need the, the materials to be right, but if you have the materials that, you know, everybody says you should be using, it's actually a little bit thin. Um, you know, work on your consistency before you think maybe something's wrong with the paint you're using or medium you're using. All right, that feels better. So you can see it's still fluid. It's still going to pour off my stick. See the custard test if I run my finger through it. It's not really going back together. Now if I wanted cells, that would be too thick because you want that paint to run back on itself a little, little bit if you want cells. So I have this pink that I just mixed, and then I have this. This is Nova Color, and I marked on here with Sharpie. This is Nova Color Water Only, um, and I put that so I know that this is a mix I use for swirls. Um, the good thing about using Sharpies on these is... Um, you can, when you're done, if you're not familiar, if you haven't been doing this very long, which if you're watching a beginner video, you probably haven't, these clear plastic cups, the paint peels right off. And then, if you've written on them with Sharpie, which is really smart, I sometimes forget with regular ones, I, I usually try and do it with my no silicone mixes, um, but if you write on it with Sharpie, some rubbing alcohol will take that Sharpie right off, so when you mix your next batch of paint, you can write on there what's on there. Now, if you use the same type of paint and same mix every time because you like the same look every time, um, obviously you don't need to worry about that. But I don't because I like, like I said, I like to have my swirls. I like to play around a little bit with um, different techniques with different mixes. And this again, Nova Color Water Only. Nova Color is just the brand of paint. So, and this is another Creative Inspirations. This is their pearlescent. So I'm going to use these four colors. And they're all mixed, just water and paint, exactly the way you saw me do the pink. Okay. So, now, this is my canvas. I'm just going to use a little one, so I'm not going to need a whole lot of paint. Um... And this cup will be 
good enough. But um, the way you want to do this, and I, if you've seen any of my swirl videos, um, you've seen that sometimes I start talking on camera and then my brain just shuts off because I'm talking instead of thinking about what I'm doing. But um, and I then I do it backwards. But the first color in will be the last color out, which doesn't matter so much if you're doing something more like this where you're using the same colors over and over although I only had red in the center so that was my first color in and I didn't use much of it after that um, but basically I have the same colors over and over and over so it doesn't matter so much but if you want something where's my um, more like this where you have different colors on the outside than on the inside um, the inside is going to be the first color you pour into the cup so anything you want on the outside, you pour la or pour first, and this is going to be the last color you pour. Um, and like I said, I get to talking and sometimes get it backwards <laughs> because I'm busy talking and not um, thinking. So this I think I'm just going to, well, let's do an order on this one with white all the way through. Let's start with blues and then we'll end up with pink. Um, so the other thing you want to you want to think about, um, where's my little? These are great now. Mine, for whatever reason, my last batch of paint wouldn't clean out of here very well. So I think I'm gonna have to toss this, uh, or try a solvent. Maybe I'll try a solvent in there before I throw it away. Um, but these are great for for swirls because it comes out in a very thin stream, and it makes it really easy. Plus, they're very easy to hold. So when you're pouring. Um, you just get a really good grip on it. And since you're holding it for a long time, that, that's kind of nice. Um, but whether you're using that or just a little cup like this, um, I like to pour on the edge instead of in the middle. Because when you're pouring your colors and layering them um, right here, then when you start pouring them, it's going to come out a lot better and in a lot um, cleaner separation between colors than if you pour them in the middle and then you pour from the side. That that um, color layering is going to be more in the middle than in the side so you're not going to get quite as nice striations. Now it'll still look very pretty um, but I like to do it right here. I think you get better striations and better um, swirl pattern when you pour it right in there. So I'm going to start out with blue. A little bit of this. Let's do some white. Some more blue. Now you can tell this is thicker than a regular mix that you're going to do cells because it's, it's bleeding a little bit into colors but not really and nothing's sinking. So it's just kind of, um, do a little bit. It's kind of layering just like you're you you know you're laying layering something with the same consistency. Do a little more blue. Should have looked up how many ounces I would need. For this size canvas. If you want to know how much to use on a specific sized canvas, um, I like to use Art Resin's um, resin calculator. Put in the size of your canvas and then you want to multiply what it says times 1.5 up to... Um, oh, sorry, I guess I'm still recording. My light just came off. Um, but anyway, I um, hope you can still see. Um, because basically the art resin calculator is going to give you the amount of resin it would take to cover a surface and since resin you don't have layering you just want one thin coat um, it takes a lot less let's start in with the pink so if you multiply that times 1.5 up to 2 you're gonna get a good amount of paint and it's gonna be really close to what you want and of course if you're layering like on here um, especially if you have a color in the center that you're not adding till the end, um, you definitely want, you know, a good guess, which I did not do. So 
you know, learn by my not doing. What does that do as I say, not as I do? But you can really see in here how the colors are staying separate, and you can already see that pattern of how it's going to come out of the cup um, in, um, in the cup, which is really nice. Probably need, well, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to need more than this. I have a little 4x4 four four inch canvas. Right, I think that's the last of the blue I'll, I'll add. So it's really not going to take a lot of paint, but. Maybe go halfway. Or maybe I'm really off. See, and I started talking. I was thinking I wanted pink in the middle, and I started talking to you guys, and I did it backwards, didn't I? <sighs> I don't know why I always do it backwards. I think I always do it backwards because I've gotten so used to doing it backwards. Kind of like my four-year-old who will get his shoes on the wrong feet more than on the right feet because he's so used to doing that way that it's like, okay, is that the only way you can do it now? One more thing. I know I said I wasn't going to use any more blue, but I lied. Okay, mm, that's about two ounces. This is a five ounce cup. Yes, I'm gonna say that's good. I can always flood the edges if we don't get enough. Okay, so the other thing you wanna do with a swirl, in my opinion, um, is flood the canvas with a paint color. Um, you could also use, um, if you, especially if you don't mind cells, you can use Floetrol um, if you don't want to use paint, or you can use um, like a basics fluid medium, matte fluid medium. Um, basically, what it's going to do is having a wet canvas um, with paint already on it, it's going to help that swirl spread out, whereas if you're pouring on a dry canvas, either one you've already painted or, you know, just a fresh canvas, it's going to resist a little bit. So it just helps it spread and um, creates a really pretty, really pretty swirl. Yeah, I don't think it makes a huge difference to the end result, but enough that um, I like to do it. And since we're talking about the best ways, I'll have to peel some of this off. This is just canvas I did and didn't really like, so I thought I'd use it today for this thing. So, let's see. Let's use this one. And you don't need a thick coat for this, for the flooding process. You just need enough so that the canvas is wet and you don't have any resistance from a dry canvas. That's, that's all. Alright, so now I poured on this side, so I'm going to pour out from this side. And then you can pour just straight, or you can sort of move your hand a little bit. And that just kind of gives a little bit more wave to it. Oh gosh, I had plenty of paint. See, that's why art resin is a good idea. Yeah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pour that onto something else because I have plenty on there. But there you can see that really pretty swirl. And I'm kind of going to go in circles so I keep it a little bit circular. And then I'm going to start going off the side. So we're keeping that pretty, those pretty striations. And if you want to keep the circle, 
you can really either just keep going in circles or you can um, do, 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 sort of do like a, a little bit thinner of a paint and then just try and spread it out a little bit or go to go closer to the edge of the canvas but I was getting so much paint on there um, I didn't want any more paint on there but there you go that's kind of a wave effect if you have pink waves but you can see I'll go cl I'll do some close-ups but you can definitely see all the colors the um, pearl kind of blended a little bit um, which that pearl tends to do. Do I have another one with that pearl? Oh, I don't think so. Right here. The pearl essence I've noticed does tend to, um, it's very transparent. It does tend to, um, bleed a little bit more. Okay, so let's do some close-ups so you can see all these pretty details. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat all of a sudden. That's kind of interesting where it zigzagged. I've not had one do that before. It's kind of pretty. Or they look a little bit like intestines since they're pink. <laughs> Whichever floats your boat there. <laughs> wave or intestines. I think I'm going to go with wave. There you can see the, the lines of color. Nope. Doesn't want to focus. There we go. No striations. Really pretty. And that's how I personally like my swirls. Um, to not have any cells and really be defined like that. I think I have one more here that I'll show you real quick. I did this one. This was a trip. This is another triple swirl. And those triple swirls really give interesting effects. But I hope you try this and try it with this mix. And if you're interested in doing a triple swirl, this is just a um, like a travel baby food container, baby formula, baby food. You can get it in the baby department at um, Walmart or you can find them on Amazon. And when you're done, see if I can do this one handed without messing up the painting I just did. Just like those clear plastic cups, the paint just peels right off and you can use it over and over and over and I've tried it with the same color same colors in each cavity and I've also tried it where there's different colors so there's a couple colors here a couple colors here and a couple colors here and there's no repeats and that's kind of interesting too so these are really really fun um, to try so I really recommend it, it does some really fun things um, but that's all there is to a swirl. You just get the consistency of the paint down and pour right in the center and then tilt and there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the description box below. If you didn't catch um, episode one of this, I'll link to that in the description box as well. We did um, a regular pour with cells, with my regular um, mix with Floetrol and silicone for cells. And we will see you next time. If you have any requests for the next beginner series, something you want to see me show a little bit slower and a little more detailed, um, let me know. And in the meantime, guys, happy pouring.